Hi, all the landscape architects out there. This is a tutorial about how to make parametric paving patterns. As you can see in the pictures here, this is a relatively new trend in landscape design. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna use this site plan as an example. We have a building envelope here. There's a main entrance and the red line is our paving area. To step up the game, I'll make this boundary very irregular. So first off, we have to pick a start point, aka layout origin. This will usually be a significant location of the building footprint like a corner. In our case, it will be the midpoint of the main entrance door. Then we're gonna add another point to determine our paving orientation. So go ahead and open Grasshopper and reference these two points. And we've got our paving orientation you can always move around the endpoint to change it as you want. Then we just need to create a rectangle as our unit paver. I'm just going to do 600 millimeters by 300 millimeters. This is a common size in my region. If you're using the English system, you can consult your local suppliers. Next, we're going to array the paver so it can over the whole area and not exceed too much. You can duplicate the array a couple of times. We can quickly select the pavers inside the boundary using the node called Collision One Many. Then we're going to sort all the pavers by their distances to layout origin. These distances is actually the key variable we'll use to control the paver colors. Before that, we're going to fine tune the edge pavers. We'll again use the node collision one many, but this time we only use the boundary polyline for obstacle. This is how we dispatch the edge pavers from the others and trim them with the boundary. Now we can separate all the pavers and add in a random twist. We'll use the node jitter to sprinkle the sorted pavers and split them into two groups. If you want, you can keep subdividing the split pavers using the node called Random Split List. This node is from an essential grasshopper add-on called Lunchbox. Next, we can turn all the paver surfaces into simple meshes. This way, we can reduce our file size.
Finally, we can assign the split pavers different colors and bake them into Rhino. So this is how you can create parametric paving pattern. And one last tip. Sometimes for the purpose of better communication and simple application, we can select all the nodes and click the on the scrolling wheel and choose the package icon. This way you can pack all the nodes selected into one node. Go ahead and double click on this package. It will open up and you can continue editing. Then you need to replace your key variables with the node cluster input and the final result with the node cluster output. Now click on the open package icon and choose save and close. Now you have the respective input and output on the package node outside. Type in the key variables again, and it's all set with just a single component. <laughs>